Welcome to another edition of News Bite here on Daily World Television. My name is Cal Korf and I'm your host. The United States continues to show under the incoming Donald Trump administration. It continues to show every sign and every indication that it is going to follow through with Trump's promise to move the U.S. Embassy from the Israeli city of Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a city that both the Palestinians and the Israelis claim is their, quote, eternal capital, unquote. Now let's talk about Jerusalem for just a minute. The modern revisionist la-la left-wing liberal myth is that Jerusalem belongs to the Palestinians. Well, that's news to historians because Jerusalem is a city that is several thousand years old. It was made Israel's kingdom in the year 1000 BC. That means over 3000 years ago. You can do the math. King David, who united Israel, declared Jerusalem as its capital. It has been the capital of Israel ever since or what used to be called the Kingdom of Judea. When the Ottoman Empire took over what is now Israel and that area as well as parts of what are now called Palestine, they occupied it for several hundred years. Then the Ottoman Empire lost World War I because they stupidly sided with the Germans. They were defeated by the British, the French, the United States, of course, and because they lost, the Ottoman Empire was then put out of its existence. Custody of the territory that they once occupied, that's a key word, folks, here, occupied, was then given to the British and the French. The French took areas like Syria and Lebanon. The British controlled the land of Palestine, which at that point was considered to be where mostly the Jews lived. After the Holocaust of World War II, Israel was reborn as a nation. There was a mandate passed and agreed to by the United Nations. Israel accepted it. The Arabs did not. And because they refused to accept partition of the land, awarding the smallest part of it, the smallest part to Jews and Israelis, there was a war. The combined armies of five different Arab nations immediately invaded the new Jewish state and tried to exterminate it in its birth. They fell. Israel won those wars, much to the surprise of everybody, and has never looked back. Israel has essentially won every war that has been launched against it because if they don't win, they will no longer exist. Now, the issue that currently is stalling the so-called peace negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians is, one of them is the issue of Jerusalem. Does it belong to the Palestinians or does it belong to the Jews? Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has clearly said, and most Jews agree with him, that Jerusalem is Jewish. It is the capital of Israel. It has been for thousands of years. History is on his side. The Palestinians are claiming that Jerusalem belongs to them. This is a variation of the radical Islamic argument that if I put a single toe on a piece of land that I conquer, it's always mine. This is the reason why Islamo-fascist terrorist groups like the Islamic State claim in their five-year plan, which they published uh, two years ago, that they want to reconquer all the lands that used to belong to Muslims all the way down from uh, Spain to the southern tip of India, because at one point that entire geographical area or various parts of it was under um, Muslim occupation. And that's the key issue here, occupation. The modern la-la left-wing liberal media loves to say that the Jews occupied Palestinian lands, even though those lands have been Jewish for thousands of years. In fact, before the 1967 Six Days War, which Israel won, the so-called Palestinian Arabs were really Jordanian Arabs. They were Arabs from Jordan. In fact, the term Palestinian up until that point often referred to Jews as in Jews who live in Palestine. Arabs didn't like to be called Palestinians. So the so-called issue of Palestinians always being there, having the land for thousands of years, that it was always theirs, those are modern lies. 
and shame on anybody who perpetuates them. Do your research, folks. There is no Palestinian language. There's no Palestinian ancient coinage or coins or money. There's no Palestinian pottery. There's no Palestinian unique fashions or clothes. There's no Palestinian ancient texts or books because there never has been a separate distinct race of people known as Palestinians. In fact, the only reason that the word Palestine exists is because the Romans renamed the kingdom of Judea to take out the word Judea and Jews out of the vocabulary to shame the Jews who had been conquered and sent to Rome as slaves. In fact, the word P or the letter P doesn't even exist in the Arab language. Ergo, the word Palestine can't exist. Instead, it is a English equivalent of what was Philistina, the renamed uh, word, if you will, that the Romans gave to the area known as the Kingdom of Judea. Today it's called Palestine. It was the mandate of Palestine that the British were given at the end of World War I to oversee that area. Again, the entire Middle East was split between the victorious Allied powers, including France and England. The United States wanted no part of this. They had their own issues to deal with. They were not interested. And then you end up with this mess today only because the Arabs rejected the partition after the war. Had they accepted it, there would be a Palestine today, a separate autonomous country, and it would have more land and it would be larger in geographical size than it ever will be now, should there one day actually end up being a two-state solution, allowing Palestine and Israel to coexist side by side. One last note. Another issue that keeps coming up is the 1967 borders. The Palestinian National Authority says they want and will agree in principle to a two-state solution that recognizes the 1967 borders. These are the same borders that they've rejected for decades. Well, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has made it clear he's not going to accept this because if they were to go back to the 1967 borders, this would leave parts of Israel with narrow borders that are only 10 to 12 miles wide. That's less distance than a homemade Hamas or Palestinian rocket can be fired. So Israel needs security, all countries do, and a 12, 10 to 12 mile border is not gonna give you security. So Netanyahu, understandably, logically, commendably, has rejected it. I predict that as long as the Palestinians remain deliberately divided, since they're also ruled by Hamas in the Gaza Strip, there will be no two-state solution. It is a delusion. The world might as well face this because who speaks for the Palestinians? According to Gazans, it's Hamas. According to Palestinians who live in the West Bank, it's the Palestinian National Authority. They have a unity government on paper in theory only. But let's be blunt about this issue. Abbas, the current president of the Palestinian National Authority, he is in the 10th year of his original four-year term. He has no opponents, no successor. He deliberately refuses to pave the way for one. Hamas, the terrorist group, is just waiting for him to die because he's quite up there in years and he's not going to be in office much longer. Once he's no longer in power, Hamas is going to move in, take over all of it if they can, and there's not going to be any peace. As long as Hamas believes that Israel does not have the right to exist, which is in their charter, that's the reason they live, that's what they fight for, that's what they struggle for, to eliminate every Jew on the planet, regardless of their geophysical location. You can, it's in their charter, you can look it up. As long as that kind of hate-driven, racist, inexcusable doctrine advocating genocide remains a part of this group, there's never going to be peace. There can never be. It doesn't matter that it's Hamas this time. During World War II, it was Adolf Hitler and the Nazis who also made a point to exterminate Jews. We call it the Holocaust.